Today we're going to talk about teaching strategies for a fieldwork experience. So when you're thinking about teaching strategies for welcoming a student into your environment, you need to consider the learning style of your student, the strengths and the areas of improvement that, that this teaching strategy will be geared towards, and then the feasibility in terms of whether or not, for example, the environment of, of which you're going to be implementing this teaching strategy, the time it will take to implement the teaching strategy, and then the accessibility of that. So for example, in terms of your access, if this is a, a teaching strategy that requires a good amount of technology, and you don't necessarily have access to technology within your setting, then that might not be the proper teaching strategy for, for your setting. When we think about time, consider, for example, uh, certain teaching strategies such as a journal. J daily journals require a good amount of investment of time from the point of view of the student, but also from the point of view of the clinician who will be reviewing the journal and giving feedback on a daily basis or on a uh, bi-weekly basis. And so consider again, if you don't have time within your facility, then again, that teaching strategy may not be appropriate for you. So let's talk about the top five teaching strategies for fieldwork experiences. So the fifth one that we're going to start with from the bottom is the learning contract. Now the learning contract is basically a contract that you establish between yourself and the student in terms of the expectations of the fieldwork experience. And as you can see here, we have a template to show you what that learning contract will look like. And oftentimes your local university will have examples of contracts that you can use and, and model from. So for example, within this learning contract, you'll see the learning objectives that you and your student will set in terms of what that student wants to learn during that field of experience, the resources they're going to use to improve on that learning, and then what is the evidence, the proof that they're going to use in order to show that they actually have achieved these goals. And then finally, the validation piece is how, how is the student going to confirm that they have actually achieved this? So whether it is your affirmation that says that the student has actually achieved this goal, or it's the patients who have said, yes, the student has really acquired this knowledge and can, and can give a really good education session on a given condition. So this is the learning contract that will help to establish the expectations for the fieldwork experience. The fourth teaching strategy is really the self-reflection piece. So really think about, for example, as your student is engaging in this self-reflection, think about the different questions you want that student to think about in order to achieve their goals. And this self-reflection can be done vocally, can be done uh, on their own, in their own spare time, but it can also be done through a very concrete um, mechanism such as the reflective journal. So the reflective journal is a teaching strategy that is very much concrete and can give a, a face, if you will, to self-reflection. So this is a template of what a reflective journal would look like, and oftentimes a reflective journal is a teaching strategy that you would use on a regular basis. So you would ask your student, for example, to fill out this template perhaps uh, daily, and then you would monitor and give feedback, written feedback, on a weekly or twice a week um, basis. So in this template, we see, you know, what have I done? What have I learned? The difficulties I've encountered? And then what am I going to focus on in terms of future learning? And then what are the questions that come out of that reflection? And certainly the, the, the common pitfall of this teaching strategy is that students will tend to do just a description of their day. So definitely you want to move your student from not only a description, but a reflection of that description and what they fe felt went well and what they felt did not go so well and then how they can improve on that learning. The second teaching strategy is really to access the resources available through your local university. And oftentimes, your university will web website will have fewer documents that will give you, for example, generic learning objectives, sample learning contracts, online superv supervision modules that you can access to improve your students' skills, such as, for example, communication, giving feedback, or even in situations such as conflict resolution, if you're engaged in a conflict either between yourself and your student or between the student and someone else. 
And then finally, probably the most important or the most pivotal teaching strategy is the use of a mentor. And the mentor could be anyone. It could be the site clinical coordinator. It could be a, co a colleague in your own discipline or in another discipline, but someone that you can really feel comfortable to talk to and exchange about the different experiences your student is engaging in, your teaching strategy, your ability to communicate, your student's learning style, and all the various other things that come in within the fieldwork experience. So that mentor can really exchange their experiences with you and give you some ideas for how this fieldwork experience could be changed or modified or tailored to suit your student's needs. So to recap, the five teaching strategies that we've looked at today are learning contracts, self-reflection, um, and as a, another concrete tool of self-reflection, uh, journals, reflective journals. And then after that, we talked about supervision modules and university resources, and then finally, the use of a mentor. So thank you for listening to this presentation.